Welcome everyone. This is an overview of Resurrection Arturo. It will not be too deep, I and it's not scripted, so please bear with me. It's the first time I'm kinda reviewing or talking about a series that's not an anime, it's a TV series. Two hours long, and if you're watching in Turkish, if you watch it with subtitles, I don't know if there are actual translations, you get one fourth of the link, but obviously you get more episodes in return. So in actuality, it's one uh, 150, now multiplied by four is what you would get if you watch it with subtitles. You probably don't know Turkish when you're watching this or are a member of this channel. And so there's that. Uh, who is Atro in actuality? He is the father of Osman Ghazi, and Osman Ghazi is the founder of the Ottoman Empire. In Turkish, it's not obviously not called Ottoman, it's called Osmanlı Devlet, which translates to uh, Osmanic State. So and now you know why Osman is such an what how the name comes to be and the Turkish empires are ruled by the sultans at the time they all all have names and based on the founder like in this series uh, because it takes a uh, part before the Ottoman Empire it's in the Turkish world, it's the uh, Selçuklu Devlet, which is the Selçuk Empire, which was founded by Selçuk. And Turks back then lived in tribes, mainly, and instead of second names, they had, they were referred to as son of, um, like that, like Atul. Suleiman Shah Ul Atul, which translates son of Suleiman Shah Eldrum. That would be the full name. But if a character achieved a certain status or um, position in life, they, they would gain a different, uh, an actual second name. Like all the warriors in tribes are called Alps. And every Alps second name is like name of the Alp and second name is Alp. In this case, if Ertrul were a Alp, he would be called Ertrul Alp, but well, that's not what he's referred to. And um, also, uh, some words mean different things back then than they do now. Like Bay is. Obviously, an honorific, even back then. And today, you would translate it to Mr. Like, Bayern would mean Mrs., but back then, we didn't have Bayern. And Bay, um, back then, were the. Basically, the people who can make certain decisions on where you can vote or speak your opinion, so they have a certain um, and reign of power. Uh, Atul is son of Suleiman Shah, like I mentioned, who is the leader of the Kai tribe, and married to Jaime Hatun. And he had three siblings, one of them at the start of the story is assumed dead which is Sungo Tekken and his eldest brother is still alive which is Gundodo who is the only married member in the family and he is married to Seljan Hartun who also plays a big role in the in the story and he also um Atul has also a little brother who is Gundar and there are three Alps 
who work under him, which are Turgut Bay, and eh, who would be Turgut Bay, but now he's Turgut Alp, Bamsi Alp, and Dorn Alp. So these three Alps are there to protect Atril or do tasks. By his orders, if they aren't ordered by Suleiman Shah. So every bay has some elves working un um, under them. And the story also focuses on the Kai tribe mainly and how Atul um, conquers land, fights against various enemies, be it the Templars, Christian, and people working under the Christian empires. I think it's the Byzantine Empire. I cannot pronounce the name. The one from Rome, I think. And the Mongols, uh, the Kai tribe, uh, fought against Mongols uh, prior to the story several times, and and Atul's second eldest brother um, is implied to have died uh, again, uh, during one of the encounters. Um, the next, obviously, is uh, people in the tribe or other tribes. Um, there are often conflicts between tribes in the story. So it's not all clean, just the good guys are good and the bad guys are bad. There are shades of grey. And you have even fights against the Seljuk empires themselves. Which the tribes live for the uh, Seljuk empire. So they have, in cases of war and whatnot, they have to bow down and do as the Seljuks are asking. But in certain cases, um, Atul would go against the order for the greater good, but not for his selfish reasons. And Atul is a character who is really living for justice and is following the Quran. So it's, the good guys are usually Muslim, and this is where it can be a turn off to many people who don't like Muslims or are kind of in offense to watch religious or political TV series because they believe it's some kind of propaganda. I've also read about this. Um, but if you watch the series, you will see that well, it does play a big role. It's not trying to say that Muslim good, non-Muslim bad. Because you see plenty of um, Christians who are good. You see a lot of people who are e do evil despite being Muslims. Because having a religion doesn't mean that you can't be a bad guy. And you wouldn't sin. And there's uh, often uh, discussions regarding sinning and how you would, uh, how it would affect certain situations. And um, Atul would often go as far as even spare the people who harmed his family in if they uh, if they follow the certain rules of justice, uh, how should I say? It's really hard to translate what is what I'm referring to. But let's say if you you do a certain test which would benefit, uh, which you need to solve a really big crisis, like let's say you are a soldier and some guy just murder, 
kidnapped your son, killed your wife and whatnot. But eventually he is willing to speak out about um, certain secrets in case you let him go. And he does fulfill his tasks. Um, it is reasonable that you would even go as far as protect him from being assassinated by uh, traitors from your own camp. And these kinds of things uh, and lessons are to be learned by Airtool. It's not an exactly well developed example. If you watch the story and come across a similar example to mine, I think you will understand what I mean. And there are also a lot of strategy because it's it's a constant war situation because if the tribes are small they move to different lands because it's not because they live in tents and regardless how um, good your tents are it doesn't mean that you are safe against every kind of weather conditions so tribes tend to move to other places to find land for the animals and to prosper and when they move to other lands they disturb people who their land belongs to or they believe they belong to uh, like the Templars which are Christians and want to annihilate all the Turks regardless how disgusting their methods might be but they aren't all merciless if there's a way they can get rid of them without even needing to harm them or apply backlash they would go as far as to negotiate with other Turks to achieve that role. Uh, often that happens to be with gold and corruption through gold is a common thing in Resurrection Altro and it I guess it makes sense if you give someone you challenge someone's belief with just throwing a bunch of cash and especially if people are in need they would go as far as take the cash and sin in return just to stay safe and there are characters like Adril who do not fall to the temptation. Um, another character I think does really well. Uh, one character really defined by gold is Noyan. The real Noyan doesn't look like that. But in the series Noyan is a merciless Mongol leader. I don't know if you call that a leader, a commander is probably the best way to describe him. So he commands a bunch of Mongols in a certain area and he's not afraid to kill kids and women but he's a respectable warrior if you can say it. Uh, he really admires the strength of the Turks and he would he would prefer if they would join them instead of having to kill them and often he does that talk try to convince Atrul to join him because if Atrul would, would be to join them he's um, conquering even Constantine which is today is Istanbul would be an easy task in his mind and um, there are Turks that end up falling to his um, deciding to join Noyan and how Noyan would determine if they are royal or not would be just using gold and if they fall to the temptation on taking the gold gold and um, Noyan would execute them because 
if they can be bought up, if one can buy them, their loyalty is can be affected. So he doesn't want corruptible people to join him, and he would be showing no mercy to these kinds of people. And this is a this is why Noyan is one of my favorite characters, especially the acting. I'm a, in anime. You don't really look have to look at how the characters physically act because every, they can really as the animators. There are multiple people that can easily um, change how it flows and voice acting there is a bit more safe but in a TV series I noticed that it's a bit harder especially since um, high status people often peop shows like this just have people in the show as a character because they are models and whatnot so it's symbols of beauty and whatnot and this will not be an issue in Atwell, but in its sequel series Kurulush Osman where the main character Osman is basically a model and his acting is oh, as of right now as I'm watching it it's pretty underwhelming to almost bad but the uh, actor for Afro was really impressive. He knows when to be sarcastic. He knows he really acts like someone who is unnoble and has a sense of justice. Uh, how to look sad, how to look like a real father, because in the series he will become a father of three kids. Um, eventually his wife dies and he has to care of all three by himself and eventually uh, Atwood's burden would grow with the amount of land he gets and with the responsibilities he would get through his promotion by the Sultan Aladdin Kekubat where he would go from Bay to Uch Bay which are, is uh, basically someone who rules over the borders um, and m many base would work under him from other tribes so he is a leader of he would be a pseudo leader of other tribes and would call them for different decisions that need to be made and because it's a a war based series, you know, of a uh, series which it, about historic events where there are constant wars between tribes, between um, countries, between uh, templates and other Christians against the empire and whatnot. Um, you will see a lot of fighting and the fight scenes can be a mixed bag. I'm not really much into these kinds of action scenes. They are entertaining, but um, the entertainment value ends when characters just throw their weapons to grab them again, just to slash the enemy. Like, I don't know if you watch Star Wars, which I didn't, but I did see certain fighting scenes where characters would just spin their weapon for no reason before attacking and these kinds of things seem to appear in Adwell as well but it it becomes a problem later on in the series at the start it's not that big of a deal and what I mainly like is how traps are set in mind games uh, the characters try to see in the mind of the enemy and make decisions based on that and have a certain security backup plans in case of things not working out. 
being traitors or pretending to be traitors again of each other to lose the enemy to expose themselves that kind of things which is really entertaining and to watch there's an enemy who pretends to be a be disabled and there's several episodes about figuring out who is the who is the bad guy and that can be entertaining especially entertaining is also when multiple um, fractions are coming into the mix like there's the christians uh, fighting against uh, against the Turks uh, trying to figure out the problems and there's a trader tribe who comes into the mix and ultimately then the Mongols who are probably the most powerful and imposing people at that point in the series because they conquered so much land and vastly outnumber everyone and that characters have to make alliances and put differences aside to beat the much bigger threat. Okay. Let's talk a bit about a bit of characters. I also think regarding Adriel there are a few problems. If you go to the series, don't expect it to be 100% uh, historically accurate, because that's for one, it's not possible. And the other thing is, um, certain decisions are made because of circumstances, like a certain character uh, has health issues, those uh, is removed from the story for that reason, or cinematic flair, like a reoccurring villain who would be killed by a certain other person historically is killed by the main character instead um, for the cinematic effect so you should not you should watch with taking out the series of for grain of salt but this also puts it in a position where you have to criticize it for something else which is that there are certain characters introduced who had a certain amount of impact in the story or is are built up to do something more but end up just being dealt with off screen by a, by something unknown um, and like one of the first major soldier characters that comes into the story um, whose name I forgot, something with Kara. He's really, in he appears really incompetent, and I really didn't like him as a villain and a character. Um, then this how the series ends. I think the ending itself is fine. Like, I'm not gonna spoil that. But... The last enemy who appears is a letdown because he had a strong start by killing some really important characters and he is implied to be such a big threat but after that every plan he has falls and is just simply outsmarted by Eldril numerous times that he kinda appears like a joke. That. What else can we talk about? Let's talk about some characters. Also, there's something else before I go to that. There's one character who is... who would eventually be a traitor, but in the story he is not a traitor. Uh, because at that point, historically, he is... he did not do these kinds of things and uh, what the show does to build that up is show certain a lot of moments where that c character who would eventually be a traitor um, of Osman Ghazi 
makes so baffling dumb decisions where he's ending up being fed up and while he does some good things and even saves the tribe several times because of his decisions as they show that his incompetence albeit inexperience led to really near catastrophic um, outcomes and I think that is done really well so when you move from Derelish Atrol or Resurrection Atrol to Kolosh Osman where the character reappears as in a high position of the um, Kai tribe you do believe like okay this character makes sense now oh man I knew this character will fuck up at some point and such things and now because I let's talk about some of my favorite characters and um, I talked about Noyan um, he's not noble he's dirty he's an asshole but he follows his beliefs he is has a warrior spirit and he does respect people that are he respects other warriors and he replace repays back lo royalty in his own way and then they started in Kopec with a high-ranked person in the Seljuk Empire who is also a re reoccurring enemy and I think so it's the Akdaras really did, his, it, did, a, did a really good job at making him villainous and this is kind of uh, no seeing himself as a human above others it, it's really done well with uh, Sadat Den Köpek and you, he tries to keep himself clean and he likes using others one of the quotes even before this guy appeared and you hear a lot of the opinions of other characters like one character one leader tribe referred to him as someone who would never give someone else land but if there's land to be conquered he would just take it for himself so this guy wants to become bigger and bigger so to speak and he's near the highest point in his position so what could his goal be I wonder um, he would use others for his benefit so he would never do something good for the sake of caring for someone but always with self-interest so it, it's so He's so power abusive that if you turn an offer of his stone, like, I assume you are a dog, a girl of a certain tribe, and he wants you to marry him. If you turn that down, that that's that's a no good sign. He he cannot take a no as an answer in these kinds of situations. Uh, because he expects because of his high rank and such that it's it's a given that you accept his offer because it's you want that luxurious lifestyle and he if you don't there's no way you can turn that down that's the type of character he is and in the show the only character who really can stand up to him except the sultan is Adro who always questions his decisions and is the only one who can challenge him and that eventually would make him really really mad that he would conspire behind the scenes to make 
actual uh, someone who needs to be in jail or needs to be taken down. Um, especially Atrol will be uh, so to his eyes because he does a lot of things that benefits the country, the state, the empire, to the point that even the Sultan would grant him the rank of Uchbe, so the border lord, so to speak. So there's a satisfaction and anticipation to to the demise of Sadat and Köpek. But um, Sadat and Köpek is not one of my favorite characters. Um, a character I really like is um, Sajan. Is Sajan Hatun, who at the start of the series is one of the <laughs> most despicable characters because uh, she has a burden. Um, her father died, and she's driven by revenge. And for the sake of his father, he, she wants to have the highest position in the tribe. So he married the eldest son of the Kaye tribe leader, Suleiman Shah, whose name is Gündodu, and Gündodu is the eldest brother of Atul. And Saljan's uh, despicable character is described by one of the traders as if if the if Satan if the devil could see you he would ask himself why do I even exist meaning that's how evil uh, Saljan Hartun is she would do some of, she would feed up his her husband to the point he would make some irrational decisions he make he would uh, work with uh, traders alike to get uh, certain characters she thinks is a soul in her eyes out of the bay and she, she would not even refrain from using her own sister for her benefit. And that this evil inside her that keeps building up uh, had cost her before the start of the series already four children. So before the children were born, they died. So eventually, Saljan Hatum would convert to the side of good after seeing people that are more disgusting than her questioning her own um, her own decisions and eventually she would move out of her um, despicable mindset and try to uh, how is it? She would ad admit for her uh, sins and would do a lot of things to make up for what she did. And eventually, working to better herself would lead her to actually improve the relationship between herself and his husband and even go as far as actually giving birth to children and having them grow to um, grow to an adults. She would also become a really respectable figure in the series. Like if you see the Saljan Hatun after converting to the Psychic Boot, her scenes are one of the best scenes <laughs> in the series. She her sarcasm, uh, how she beats the crap out of certain traders, the, those are the some of the best scenes. There's one scene where uh, her little sister would just uh, 
do all the decisions that's just absolutely could ruin her life. So she would walk to her, try to talk her out, but then gets insulted by her little sister and reminded for the things she has done, and then she would repeatedly bitch slap her to get her out to remind her what the <laughs> <laughs> it's really hard to explain. You have to see the scenes themselves. Uh, even in in the sequel series, she's probably one of the best characters uh, in terms of how she speaks with each other. Like, there's one character who's a traitor, but nobody knows that she's a traitor. Uh, figures out that there's a speak where. You, speech where if you want to fool the enemy you have to fool the people around you and so John was one of the few characters who knew about um, what happened and so that traitor character went why didn't you tell us about this and she would go to her and say do you know how to keep secrets and the character would say yes and so John Harter would explain uh, say, then come closer. Uh, our, uh, the person who did all this knew about what could happen and he took like, oh man, it's really hard to explain it in, <laughs> in English. If I can figure out how I can explain it, then I do it. I think I would also ruin some of the of these scenes if I would just explain them. It's just it's just hype when they happen. And so Sal John Hartun is a great character. At the start she can be unbearable. She is like I described so evil that even the devil would wonder question himself his entire existence. But eventually she would be and converting to the good side of good and use her sarcasm for our entertainment and beat some bitches <laughs> beat the crap out of some annoying characters who really deserve it and there's also some wise people like Ina Arabi who would and pray for Atul to survive and he's a key character in terms of spiritualism and there are great characters like Bumsu and Bumsu Bay there's Too Good Alp who's one of the most loyal characters um, of Atul and he would historically play a big role in the life of Osman Ghazi. Apparently he lived for 125 years. I wonder how a uh, Kolosh Osman would treat him. Um, let's see. I'm trying to think if there, there had to be a lot more characters worth talking. I mean there are a lot of characters worth talking. I'm just thinking in terms of characters I like and would like to talk about but I think instead of rambling this should be it I'm just trying to think historic accuracy I talked about I talked about a few characters and I'm not gonna talk about Atwood's children because there wasn't much time invested with them and they would reappear in Polish Osman the sequel series Music, I'm usually don't talking about music, it's great. Um, yeah. There are various enemies, most can come off as repetitive. Because most characters will, you will see a lot of similarities from previous villains to new villains. Uh, but they would 
and changing how they achieve their goals. I think that that's pretty much it. I would suggest you watch it. Like I said, it's a series about people who believe in Muslims, eh, who are Muslims and believe in Islam. And most of the characters, the goals and decisions are made with Islam in mind. So, um, the Quran plays a big role in the story. There's not so there will be some spiritual shenanigans going on, obviously. And Muslim will be getting blessing of Allah. And Mongols will get the blessings of Elric Khan and whatnot, or whatever God they believe in. Christians don't know will get Christian blessings from the from God in certain aspects and they then there were no Jews from what I remember maybe we see some Jews in the sequel series I'm not about 30 episodes and yeah you have traders, you have enemies, you have enemies that convert to the side of good. You have great family moments. Yeah, you have fights between family members because of disagreements. Atrol is makes often decisions um which go against but his brothers and sometimes even his mother um, would believe in but and they often make rush built have rush opinions based on the surface level what they can see but they don't understand what Atru is mainly doing like uh, he would go against a um, certain s sultan because of a woman they would just take the woman part believe oh man he's such a romantic Casanova type of guy he's gonna ruin us because this one girl without knowing that if he doesn't save that girl from marrying this uh, sultan there would be a war between uh, countries and he wants to avoid that and these kinds of things often what you see on the surface is not what's actually going on so he has a crush on the person which can appear he's doing it for his selfish reasons but um Adwell is anything but a selfish character um if it's for the sense says sense of justice like if his son did a major crime he would not refrain from um, executing his own son even if he lost them with you know, all his thoughts that's the type of character Adril is so he would not let his uh, he would not treat his family members above how other people should be treated. He treats everyone the same when it comes to uh, things when justice needs to be applied. And you see these kinds of things when his most loyal subordinates, he even considers brothers would fail to execute an order and may have ended up harming Others, he would take the uh, uh, rank away because they are unable to fulfill that one task that could have costed a lot of life, and he doesn't want 
these kinds of issues to appear again and he wants to set an example for everyone. So by treating even his most loyal members uh, with how he would treat everyone, he would show that nobody is safe from justice, so to speak. So nobody is getting special treatment, not even his actual, actual brother. Um, in this, but you would, like I said, if you this kind of show interest you, if you like action, if you like romance, there's some romance. I don't care about romance. If you like characters and complex characters, you have some complex characters. You like, you have various villains from snobbish and and um, villains that work together to achieve a certain goal you have uh, good guys work with the enemy to get rid of another enemy and um, temporary alliances these kinds of things are really fun and what not yeah then i think at cruel is a show you want to watch maybe you get interested in actual turkish culture and because it's a historic series, you might want to look at the historic significance or, or how much is this accurate to the actual actual story, like Sadat in Köpek, if you just look at how the characters look. you ha This is how he would have l used to look in real life. This, um, this actor is much, much older visually and doesn't have the same style but in terms of acting and presenting what kind of character that Tim Köpek is I think as an as a villain let's say as a villain because we don't know how the real Sada Tim Köpek acted in the past from what I know that guy was so disgusting he would he, he even executed his mom to get out of a pinch or because his mom did try to question his, it tried to give him an order or some sort, something that could threaten him or affected his, um, made an, in, even an impression that robbed him the wrong way, he would get rid of these kinds of people. And that's basically what who Sartin Köpik is in real life. And this Sartin Köpik is not too different. He's, I think, he, as a villain, he's really effective. And um, be it he, when he needs to be a good guy, he's helpful in the side of good. If he needs to be a bad guy, he's really disgusting. You don't want, you want him dead. And if he's on the side of good, you'll cheer for him for a while, I guess. Noyan in the, on the other hand, is like the type of villain you want to see succeed. Just because how much of an... I don't know how to explain it. If you watch anime, it's much easier to think. Where you want in the anime... Often you want villains to succeed to a certain point to see what could have been. And um, Sadin Köpek, that's what Noyan is, and Sadin Köpek is the type of villain you don't want him to even get close to this right now. You want him gone. That's Sadin Köpek. It's not like these kinds of villains should not exist or something. I think. They are effective for the story, it's entertaining, but as a character, I it's the type of villain I want to see gone, instead of stay a little longer and see how things turn out. And this is basically my overview of the Relish Outro. It's a bit longer than I anticipated, a bit rambly. Maybe I managed to sell you the 
so you can watch some clips and see some of the interactions the word word plays i don't think they are as effective in english and um, because a lot of things cannot be translated well um like in oof yeah let's let just end let's end it here i think i rambled for long enough thanks for listening and peace